For nearly 10 years, I've made a career out of producing YouTube videos. I've gotten to entertain, educate, be creative, write, perform, and overall have a damn good time doing it. I think during the last decade, one of the channels I will also follow out of curiosity were the creepypasta channels. However, I am very picky when it comes to channels like that. I don't like when those will create an atmosphere where I had to expect a jump scare, since those don't quite scare me or entertain me. In fact, a jump scare makes me angry. Just a bit of a personal info for those at home. I personally think that if a story doesn't scare me with the spiel writing, then the video shouldn't overdo how to make it scary. Like putting sound effects that aren't part of the story, there are exceptions to this, like Sonic.exe, but that's because the creator of the creepy file put those scary elements, they're actually part of the story instead of something the YouTuber added for dramatic effect. And with that, it's fair to say my two favorite YouTubers for this kind of content were Mudokar for some ordinary gamers and Mullet Mike from Creepy Gaming. And while I can dedicate a whole video to both of them individually, there are elements that I can easily give to Mike exclusively, especially since he's a YouTuber I actually got to know on a personal level. Yeah, this is gonna be more of a personal video than a review per se. In fact, I even had the pleasure to work for him on the latest Creepy Gaming episodes, as well as some of the Marathon videos. What was interesting about the way he will tackle the stories is by giving either a brief synopsis of what the story was about, or a full retelling of it, but with a regular tone within both his voice and the video unless the topic of it requires it. But it is exactly that, the story is the star of the video, and if it has supplementary material like a game, file, or video, that's what will be used for the additional effect. He will also take its time to tackle scary elements from the actual gaming community, from Final Fantasy Freddy's to Metal Gear Solid, some of the Rockstar games, Resident Evil, the list goes on honestly. He will work on a seasonal format for almost the entire decade until recently decided to go and study psychology deciding that YouTube will be something he'll do whenever he thought right instead of having a common formula or a committed schedule. So yeah, a pretty straightforward channel on creepy elements of the gaming world and its community. But honestly, when you're part of a genre of videos that are drowned by dramatic readings with additional effects and unnecessary jump scares, he, as well as Mudokar, were a breath of fresh air that offer an opportunity to actually appreciate stories for what they are. And to a certain extent, at least for me, help viewers set a standard of what will make a creepypasta actually good. I'm not saying that they impacted the creepypasta community to improve, but they definitely help people that love creepypastas to expect better than more RepublicSonic.exe, while making sure that the stories were at the very least something fun to listen to. Hell, he even made a parody called Cliche.exe, tackling those tropes in a very entertaining manner. And to be honest, if making it to this point hasn't showed you already, one of the major reasons why I wanted to talk about this channel a little bit is definitely a personal element to it. If my recent videos can tell you something about me, is that I don't want to focus on reviewing things I don't enjoy. I think we're surrounded by people following the angry reviewer legacy that we think that that's all there's to it from time to time. But personally, I don't want to 100% put more time than needed in talking about bad movies, bad stories, bad channels, or bad people, unless it's something like the Grey Line podcast where we actually talk and discuss about those things, but even then, we don't tackle them just to say something is shit, or something is terrible, or horrible. We actually try, with the keyword trying if you want to say, to make a discussion about the situation rather than just pick a side on, on it. And that is mostly because I want people to be entertained and watch my content as something to be entertained and feel good afterwards because it was videos like his what will bring that vibe to me. And even if it was for a couple of major videos and compilation, working with him was a very small dream come true, but a dream nonetheless. Like I said, there's no real cancellation, as the saying goes, never say never. But for all intents and purposes, like the seasonal format is over, and he knows if he ever has an idea, he can text me and we'll work on it, and it'll be something you guys will be the first to know if it happens at some point. And one of the major lessons I had learned with him is that there are so many things we're never too late to work on in life, and that everything will be okay as long as we do what we love because we love to do it as the main reason for it. Whatever we can say about the quality of the work he put, there was never a point where he didn't show his true emotions during it, whether for something he truly enjoyed or something he definitely despised like hell Satan, you will hear his real emotion depending on the topic because he was always genuine about his content while working on it. 
and that kind of spirit is something I hope I can give to you guys. My favorite videos from him are the Rockstar videos due to the amount of ideas that could come out of each and every one of them. And just like those games, I give my hat to you Mike, you're a good friend, a good man, and someone the world can be proud of. I hope you're doing great, stay creepy, thanks for watching, peace. Some of you have mentioned how I may have inspired you or helped out during a rough time. These are the ultimate compliments. Thank you all so much. It's ironic that I started creepy gaming when my oldest son was born and how my last episode was a birthday present to him for his eighth birthday. It's been one hell of a run.